For the benefit of those who bunked the lecture and missed the excitement, uh, we had a computer crash, but it's all fine now. It won't happen again. All right, Jacobians continue. Okay, all right. Frequently used transformations. <laughs> We are going to be doing some that I like to think of as bespoke transformations where you're going to have to derive the Jacobian on the spot. Largely, we're going to be using these ones here, so we derive the Jacobians once and just memorize them. Um, so frequently transformations are those between Cartesian and polar cylindrical or spherical coordinates we can determine those Jacobians once if you could please keep quiet if you're bored just put your head on the desk and have a snooze Okay, we can determine those Jacobians once, then remember them as standard forms <coughs> to be used as needed. Okay, so let's derive them. They're very easy to derive. They're just determinants of derivative matrices. So when we change, when, when, When we change from polar, so I'm rather going from polar to cylindrical, I'll just ex um, to Cartesian. Uh, I'll explain why once I've written out the formula. When we change from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates, <coughs> oops, sorry, rather scribbly handwriting there. We're basically moving from R theta space into XY space using the transformation transformation or mapping. Mapping is also a word you can use. Um, XY <coughs> equals R cos theta. Catch up with me, stylus. <laughs> sort of. R cos <laughs> R sine theta. So X is R cos theta and Y is R sine theta. Um, I could express R in terms of X and Y and theta in terms of X and Y. That would be fine. Generally, we tend to think of X in terms of R and theta and Y in terms of R and theta, but you could, of course, go both ways. But because we conventionally tend to think of X in terms of R and theta and Y in terms of R and theta, that's why I'm thinking of going from polar to Cartesian. But, of course, we could flip that around and go from Cartesian to polar. It doesn't matter. If we have the Jacobian for the shift in one direction, we automatically have the Jacobian for the shift in the other direction because it's just the reciprocal of the Jacobian. Okay, I'm starting to use complicated sentences, aren't I? Question? Um, I'm just a bit confused about what exactly is a Jacobian. Is it like a conversion factor? Yeah, it essentially comes down to a conversion factor, yes. Uh, in, a, in a similar sort of way to the conversion factor in surface integrals, where you are converting your little delta A in the one set of coordinates to a delta A in the other set of coordinates. Um, and your conversion factor, if you will, although I won't be using that term, um, is the Jacobian, and the Jacobian is the determinant of the derivative matrix that represents the transformation. More accurately, it is the modulus of the determinant of the derivative matrix that represents the transformation. Um, so just to be completely explicit about this, we could actually call these component functions and actually give them little names like f and g. Okay, so we'll work out the Jacobian. The, the easy Jacobian to work out is that one, differentiating x and y with respect to r and theta. 
If we wanted to work it out the other way around and put the r theta at the top and the xy at the bottom, we would need r in terms of x and y and theta in terms of x and y, which is not hard to achieve, um, but this is the obvious one to work out. So here are my determinant lines. Derivative of x with respect to r. Derivative of x with respect to theta. Derivative of y with respect to r. Derivative of y with respect to theta. And I want the determinant of that. A Jacobian is a determinant. A Jacobian is not a matrix. A Jacobian is a determinant of a matrix. And you can write that as det if you want det instead of doing the vertical lines. And that we do a little crisscross determinant. What do we get? We get r cos squared theta subtract negative r sine squared, so plus r sine squared theta, and of course that just becomes r. So our Jacobian is r. Okay, what does that mean? That means that, have I written it out explicitly in my notes here? Um, that means that the delta a, let me just make sure that I've got this right, <coughs> delta A in Cartesian coordinates or rectangular coordinates over delta A, you could call it delta A dash perhaps, in R theta coordinates is equal to R, in other words dx dy is R dr d theta. Okay, and that is in that box on page 55. Question? Okay, so that thing over there is dx by dr. That thing over there is dx by d theta. That thing over there is dy by dr. And that thing over there is dy by d theta. Okay, so each row corresponds to a coordinate a component function. So the first row is the first component function. In other words, the r cos theta. The second row is the second component function, the r sine theta. First column are the d by dr derivatives. Second column is the d by d theta derivatives. And that order is dictated by the fact that I've got r theta down there in that order in the denominator of that Jacobian expression. Uh, where was I? That you need to memorize. Okay? It's not hard to memorize. And I've made it easier by sticking it in a box um, on page 55. Okay, let's do, let's do, let's do, let's do. Oh, hold on, just before I move on to cylindrical. Um, if dx, if this Jacobian that we've just worked out is r, it follows that the reciprocal of that, the dr theta with respect to dxy, is going to be 1 over r, but let's just think about it. If we had r in terms of x and y, and theta in terms of x and y, their derivatives would also be in terms of x and y, and when we did our little crisscross de determinant, we'd also get something in terms of x and y. We wouldn't get 1 over r. In fact, what we would get is 1 over the square root of x squared plus y squared which is R. But I'm not sure that I've ever used that in a calculation. I shouldn't actually have this light on. Oh, uh, send the light, send the light, send the light. There we go. Makes it more visible. Um, the, the, the R is used all the time. That 1 over square root x squared plus y squared I don't think I've ever used. Um, okay, let's do cylindrical, and cylindrical is just as easy. The Jacobian, now I'm going to do a bunch of examples, don't worry. So if you're looking at that and thinking, well, that's all very well, but I don't know how to use it, it's fun. I'll demonstrate. The Jacobian for changing from cylindrical to rectangular or Cartesian, same thing, coordinates. Is okay. 
Rectangular is dx, y, z. Cylindrical is r, theta, z. And we know that x in Cartesian, in cylindrical coordinates, x is still r cos theta, y is still r sine theta, and z is just equal to z. So when you work out your determinant, your 3 by 3 determinant, you're still going to get uh, cos theta minus r sine theta and 0, because that 0 is the derivative of x with respect to z. But x is r cos theta. There is no z in it. And then, so in fact, let me, x is r cos theta, y is r sine theta, and z just equals z. So what do I get here? I'll get sine theta, I'll get r cos theta, I'll get 0, I'll get 0, 0, 1. And we need to work out the determinant of that 3 by 3 matrix. It's so full of zeros that it's a very easy determinant to work out. Let me just demonstrate. So was it yesterday? When was it? Oh, gosh, I didn't finish exercise 86, did I? It's only occurring to me now. Sorry, I... I had to do that to turn, oh bother, I left 86 undone. I'm not going to go back to it now, but the solutions are up on Vula. I put the solutions up yesterday. I apologize for not completing that. If you go and check up on Vula, you will see the full solutions. Um, ugh, sorry, that was careless of me. I try not to end exercises in the middle at the end of a lecture. <laughs> Um, okay, but what I was demonstrating right at the end of yesterday's lecture was how to work out the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. And remember I said, if you're wanting to do that one where you break it down into three little determinants, you can choose any row or any column. It doesn't actually matter which one. So it's often well advised to choose a row or a column <coughs> that's full of zeros. So I'm going to choose that row over there, okay? which means I'm going to get equals 0 times, and just to completely belabor it, I'll show you what it would be. Oh, hold on. In fact, I don't have enough space there. If I cover, so I cover the row and the column that that first 0 is in. Let's have a look. Plus, minus, plus, plus, plus. Um, I'm going to have a minus r sine theta. Now, of course, it's just going to give me 0. I'm just really trying to be very obvious about what's happening here. And then remember that checkerboard? Remember that those terms are kind of sitting on top of an invisible checkerboard of signs? Um, it's always starting with plus in the top left hand. So plus, minus, plus. This zero has an invisible plus in front of it. This one has a minus. It's still zero, though. But just to be completely obvious, it's that. And then plus 1 times the determinant of cos theta minus r sine theta, sine theta, r cos theta, which, of course, is simply the determinant that I've just scrolled past at the top, just at the top of the screen. And ultimately, I'm going to end up. When you're working out the determinants of a 3 by 3 matrix, using that technique of breaking it down into 2 by 2 determinant plus 2 by 2 determinant plus 2 by 2 determinant, if your matrix has some zeros in it, you'll save yourself some work by choosing your row or your column to include those zeros. Don't have to, but you can save yourself some work. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that delta V is dx, dy, dz is r, dr, d theta, dz. Memorize that. Easy to memorize, because it's just the same as the one before. OK, now we get to the one. It's always spherical that gives us trouble. The spherical one is a little bit trickier. Remember what your spherical um, expressions are. x is rho cos theta sine phi. y is rho sine theta sine phi. And z is rho cos phi. Remember that? Of course you remember that. It's burnt into your brain. Did you have a teacher say, if I woke you up in the middle of the night, would you be able to answer such and such a question? <laughs> Isn't it a little bit creepy, the thought of your teacher waking you up in the middle of the night and asking you things? <laughs> if I come into your restroom at night and wake you up and say, right, what is X in spherical coordinates? You should report me to somebody. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> okay. But still, you should know those. If, in fact, your roommate woke you up in the middle of the night and said, what is X in spherical coordinates, you should totally know that. Then it's not creepy, then it's just irritating. Question. Can you sit quiet so I can hear the question? Yeah? No. The order doesn't matter. I'm, I'm writing it in alphabetical order, essentially, but the order doesn't matter. X, Y, Z, Y, Z, X, doesn't matter, but that R must be there if you change to R, Z, to Z. So, but if the order matters, the previous one changes, will we make the other one change? No. no. So the order of the Ds, either on the X, Y side or on the R, Z, to Z side, the order of the Ds doesn't matter, but that it doesn't change what the Jacobian is. Okay, let's do spherical. Okay, so we need to work out the determinant of that thing there. So let's have a look. D, X, in fact, let me write it in the line below. D, X, Y, Z with respect to rho theta phi is what? Oh, this is going to be big. Okay, derivative of X with respect to rho cos theta sine phi. Derivative of x with respect to theta minus rho sine theta sine phi. Derivative of x with respect to phi, rho cos theta cos phi. Okay. Derivative of y with respect to rho. Derivative of y with respect to theta. Derivative of y with respect to phi. Derivative of z with respect to rho. Derivative of z with respect to theta. There's a zero. Uh, I did just write zero. Zero. Derivative of z with respect to phi. Okay, let's work out the determinants of that. Let's have a vote. Shall I do the method where I break it down into three mini determinants, or should I do the, the, the big crisscross method? Okay, let's have a vote. Who wants the breakdown into three little mini determinants? Woo! -hoo. Okay. <laughs> and who wants the crisscross? Okay, all right. Three mini determinants wins, and yes, I will use the bottom row. Or I could have used the middle column. In fact, should I mix it up and do middle column? No, jeez, no, gosh, you're not a very adventurous class. <laughs> Don't you like a little bit of adventure with your maths? No. no. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. So that will be cos phi times by the determinant of this thing. And then it'll be minus zero, so I'll just write in there that in there for completeness and then move on to the third one, which is plus the negative. Okay, so that minus rho sine phi is sitting on top of a plus square in the checkerboard, but of course it itself is negative, so I'm just writing it that way. Okay, all right, so let's work those out. So that'll be cos phi times by. Phew, that's big and chunky, isn't it? What's it going to give us? It's going to give us minus rho squared sine squared theta sine phi cos phi subtract rho squared cos squared theta cos phi sine phi minus rho sine phi times by rho cos squared theta sine squared phi plus rho sine squared phi. Okay, alrighty then. So, in that first big chunky bracket, I can take out some common factors, surely. Yes. Hold on, am I mixing up my phi? No, I'm not. I can take out the rho squared cos phi sine phi. So I've got minus. 
rather than copying down what I'm writing, why don't you try and do it yourself? Because that's actually easier. You only have to read your dollars to keep looking up and down, up and down, up and down, and missing symbols. Come on! If you're paying attention, you'll see that terms are going to start disappearing. Or factors, perhaps, are going to start disappearing. Let's have a look what common factor is here. Okay. A little bit of simplification there. Yep. Uh, quite plausibly, have I made a mistake? Co well, I am going to get a cos squared in a sec, yeah. Um, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. It, you said negative row squared sine pi sine squared pi. It is not supposed to be cos squared pi. Yes, ma'am. Really? But sine squared pi is what I'm taking out as the common factor. Um, I'm trying to follow. I'm trying to follow you. And instead, I'm going to work through my own working. I'm just going to work through my own working to see where I've made my mistakes, rather than try and interpret what you're saying because I'm not succeeding. seeing a mistake. Come, come over here and point at it with your hand. Isn't that a cos phi and a cos phi? Yes. And then sine phi? And then why is that sine phi squared? Because I took it out of here, taking it from there, it's that sine phi squared. So that sine phi is what was already there, and that sine's, that one's from there. Okay, but then where does the cos phi spec go? This, this cos phi is from there. But this should make cos phi squared. It will. But then where, where does it go? I haven't gone into the next, that's not an equals. That's two terms in the same line. Or is it in the same line? Yes, okay, 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 so that's, okay, 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 okay. I understand, I understand, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think, I think what's, what's, what's happening here is, um, oh gosh, it's gone flickery. Um, let's do this side, I always show that side far too much love. Um, this thing is so big that I'm rolling over onto two lines. So it's looking like 
I've got one line equaling the next line, but in fact, it's just one line rolling over into the next line. And I'm trying to put gaps between them to sort of emphasize it. Um, you know I am prone to mistakes. Thank you very much for calling me out if you think I have. Um, but now I think I can shrink onto one line. Okay, and now I can still take out one more common factor. I can get a minus rho squared. I can take out sine phi as a common factor. I've got cos squared phi plus sine squared phi equaling minus rho squared sine phi. Done. There we go. There's the Jacobian. Okay, sorry about that confusion. Um, it's just because it's so big and chunky, I'm having to roll over into two lines. Okay, wow, gosh, after all of that, it's not too bad a Jacobian. It's still messier than the other ones, which we just are. Um, but it's, it's not too bad. We can remember it. But of course, that is going to be negative. Because remember what the possible range of phi is. Remember what phi is? Phi is a measure of angle outward from the positive z-axis. Phi can only take on values between theta and, and uh, between 0 and pi. Sine between 0 and pi is always positive, so we can rely on the fact that sine phi is positive. Rho squared is obviously positive, so this Jacobian is always negative. We don't want negative Jacobians because we're using them as uh, essentially a conversion factor between areas and volumes. We're using it as a, a scaling factor, if you will, for areas and volumes, so it has to be positive. So, since, by definition, Theta, I mean phi rather, always lies between 0 and pi. We know that, sorry, I know it's the end of the lecture. I've just got basically one more sentence to write. We know that this is always going to be smaller than or at best 0. For the purposes of using the Jacobian, to transform volumes, well it will be volumes when it won't be areas if we're using spherical. We require the modulus of the Jacobian, the absolute value. So we're actually going to work with the modulus of dxyz dr theta z. Ach, not r theta z, bigger pardon, I'm getting Carried away with cylindrical there, rho theta phi, which is going to be the absolute value of minus rho squared sine phi, which is just rho squared sine phi. In other words, dv, which is dx, dy, dz, in cylindrical is r, catch up with me, stylus. Hello? Woo, two d's dr d theta dz and it's rho squared sine phi d rho d theta d phi. Of course those d's can jumble around in whichever order you feel is best um, but the, those are the Jacobians and once again I repeat that's all in that box on page 55. Okay I had hoped to get to an example today but deriving these Jacobians always takes a bit of time. Oh I should say that also so all three things that were starred there need to be memorized. Tomorrow, I will do three examples. I'll do 92, 93, 94, and then we'll roll over into Monday with you working through some examples, and then we'll have finished. Now, we'll have finished this chapter. Now, you'll notice from 92, exercise 92, all the way up to exercise 125, these are all coordinate change problems. From this point on, any double or triple or surface integral that you encounter could involve a coordinate change. And we will not tell you that it requires a coordinate change. You need to make that decision. Okay, so there's lots of practice. Not only is there lots of practice in the handbook, if you look right at the end there on page 59, you'll see tons of textbook homework. And if you look through old exams and you do the integrals that are in the various exams and class test two, Almost all of them will require coordinate changes. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop there.